This review was made possible by the Yojo Outlet Center, specializing in vintage G.I. Joe toys and parts. Hello everyone, I'm Kevin, otherwise known as Forum BX257, your friendly neighborhood 1980s G.I. Joe reviewer. And today I'll be taking a look at the G.I. Joe Information Specialist, the 1989 Scoop. Now Scoop makes his first comic book appearance in the old Marvel comic G.I. Joe spin-off, G.I. Joe Special Missions number 23. But he makes his first appearance in the main title later on in G.I. Joe issue number 92. He makes his first cartoon appearance in the 1989 Deke animated five-part miniseries Operation Dragonfire in part one. Now even though the comic book and the cartoon sort of handled his character quite a bit differently, they did have one thing in common. They actually showed in his first appearances his first mission as a new Joe. Taking a look at Scoop's accessories first, we have his primary accessory, I would think. What the contents list on the card says, a high-tech camera. I'm assuming this is a uh, camcorder of some sort. It's a big uh, viewfinder at the back. A light on the top, a huge lens. I'm assuming this bit here is a microphone. It has a little peg on the bottom here, which attaches to the uh, standard black vinyl hose. And the hose itself is attached to a peg on his leg here. The uh, black vinyl hose isn't actually mentioned on the contents list of the card, strangely enough. Then he comes with a pistol. It's a uh, unique design. It's actually very thick width wise. Uh, there's a silencer or suppressor or flash hider on the front or something like that. <laughs> Rather big uh, hammer at the back too. Then he comes with a satellite relay station backpack. One interesting thing about this is that there is actually this circular peg on the bottom here and a circular indent on the uh, high-tech camera and you can actually attach that this way. Obviously you can rotate it any way you want. And of course you can uh, keep the hose attached on there as well. You don't have to remove that. Just taking a closer look at the satellite relay station backpack. Next, he comes with a removable helmet. With a, a painted on red visor. And he comes with a tiny little microphone. It's actually a rather plain job. Unfortunately, this microphone um, it doesn't, I mean, it swivels around, which is kind of nice. But uh, it's fairly easy to lose this microphone. If you're looking for a scoop on the aftermarket, that's probably the hardest part to find on here. It doesn't make them extremely valuable, unfortunately, because uh, uh, not many people really want this um, particular character. But if you're looking for one, make sure you do have one that's... Uh, complete with that microphone on there. Personally, I don't mind all the yellow on this figure. I mean, personally, I'm probably not going to be displaying him with his full accessories on. I'm probably going to be using him as more or less a support character, 
sit-down character in my displays, someone who just mans the controls in the tactical battle platform or on the USS flag. Uh, I've already sort of designated him as the driver for my uh, uh, fuel t uh, trailer for on the USS flag. But if I do have him with his accessories, I think he does make a sort of a, uh, a nice replacement or even a um, supplement to the communications officer. It's 1986 dial tone, for instance. I think that's what the Hasbro was trying to go for because it has been quite a while since we got a communications officer or even a, like, basically a tech guy in the series. So I think they were trying to go for more than just the audio side of the, the um, communications, but also video as well. Unfortunately, that's where they kind of um, made him a bit outdated here. I mean, sure, he was really high tech when he first came out, but wow, is he, uh, does he ever make me feel old? Because, I mean, let's face it, um, a lot of people say, oh, you know, Dial Tone with his big, huge, bulky backpack, he's been sort of uh, replaced by a cell phone. And that, that's totally not true. Uh, in military circles, you have communications that absolutely have to be relayed uh, from a person's uh, receiver to, like, maybe like a vehicle or to a base, then to a satellite, and then back, you know, to um, communications personnel in a completely different country. There's a lot of technology in a cell phone that you don't see happening. And all of that is supposed to be contained in Dial Tone's backpack. That's why it's so bulky. That, that's how it sort of makes sense. On the other hand, there's a lot of things that have just become so outdated on Scoop. It's actually kind of funny in a way. But like I said, it makes me feel so old to see a, a, this big bulky camera with a microphone sticking out and all this wiring up to whatever this thing is on his leg. Cameras don't look like this. Even professional news cameras, you know, journalism, even in war-torn countries, nobody uses bulky stuff like this anymore. I mean, he has like a camera on his chest. And like I said, these things are like 35 millimeter or uh, rolls on here. Nobody uses that. Nobody uses these dual tube binoculars anymore. That's all digital now. I mean, his backpack is really cool with this big satellite dish. But, I mean, check out these little magnetic tape rolls. They're long since gone. Check out his name. His name is Leonard Michaels. But backwards, as you can see here, Michael Leonard. And that's because this figure was actually based on a real-life person. Michael Leonard, the journalist from the NBC Today Show. As a matter of fact, they, I think they mauled his face after him as well. Even the place of birth on his file card is correct. He really is from Chicago, Illinois. By now, you're probably wondering two important things. One, why does Scoop exist? And two, why is he yellow? Well, to answer the first part is mostly because of his main accessory, the camcorder. Now, you have to understand, by the mid to late 80s, camcorders became very affordable, and virtually every household had one. And I'm sure a lot of kids were fascinated by this new technology, and were even starting to produce their own little films. So this is kind of a representation of that uh, exciting new technology. And he is also Michael Leonard, the news reporter. And you have to understand that by the mid to late 80s, what I would call gonzo reporting, or sort of a more entertaining style of television journalism, was really taking off back then. It was, of course, uh, spearheaded by Geraldo Rivera's. But I think uh, Michael Leonard's style is more family-friendly, which is probably why he was chosen to be a G.I. Joe, to sort of represent those values. And, of course, the only way to really represent a sort of journalist in a toy form was to sort of follow the formula that the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles had done. So they colored him like April O'Neil. Yeah, that's right. The yellow jumpsuit? That's what it was inspired from. The April O'Neil from the cartoon and the action figure. Well, that's all the time I have right now. Please check out my Facebook page for more information and behind-the-scenes photos for these reviews. 
Thank you for watching this video, and stay tuned for next time to see another 1980s G.I. Joe Tour Review. See you then.